Welcome to the Terrazine Music Foundation 2021 Gala Concert with Yo-Yo Ma, violinist Nathan Meltzer, and Simon Gronowski, joined by many exciting artists and guests. I'm Mark Ludwig, director of the Terrazine Music Foundation. It's great to be back here in Symphony Hall. Thank you for joining us. Tonight, we journey into the cultural community of Terrazine with the brilliant composer and prisoner, Victor Ullmann, as our guide. We follow the lively and learned concert critiques he wrote there. These are published in English for the first time, along with art created by Terrazine prisoners in the new TMF book, Our Will to Live. Ullmann's critiques draw us into the astonishing performances held within the barracks of this concentration camp. Before the war, Ullmann was among the most gifted composers to come out of the famed Viennese circle of Arnold Schoenberg. He was deported to Terezin in 1942 and soon became a towering cultural figure as a composer and producer of chamber concerts. Ullmann wrote his concert critiques from early 1943 through late summer of 1944. He wrote about stagings of Carmen, Tusca, and Fledermaus, to name a few. For these ambitious operatic performances, a piano filled the role of a traditional pit orchestra. Sets and costumes were improvised from whatever could be found. There were vocal recitals, a variety of children's and adult choral programs. Ullmann described instrumental recitals and chamber music programs that included both established repertoire and works composed in Terezin. His critiques introduce us to inspiring musicians who performed in a camp where more than 33,000 prisoners died. They brought hope and a momentary escape from despair. All of this artwork is from the more than 500 works collected by Karl Hermann, a member of Terezin's Jewish administrative leadership. In October 1944, Hermann and Ullmann received transport notices to Auschwitz. Ullmann entrusted his manuscripts to a friend, while Hermann hid this artwork under the floorboards and in the walls of his barracks. These miraculously saved works are an enduring treasure. In his essay, Goethe in the Ghetto, Ullmann declares, in Theresienstadt, we in no way sat around lamenting by the banks of Babylon's rivers. Our desire for culture was equal to our will to live. Ullmann's writings echo a creative determination that inspire and shape our program. In his critique of the piano evening with Elise Herzsommer, Ullmann writes, there are a large number of composers who deserve our interest, not only because they are Jews, but also because they have talent and genius. Ullmann especially praises Mendelssohn, Kurtweil, and Erwin Schulhoff. By this time, Schulhoff had died in the Würzburg Nazi labor camp. We're joined by violinist Nathan Meltzer, who will perform Schulhoff's dynamic Sonata for Solo Violin and Robert Dauber's Haunting Serenade, a work he composed in Terezin at age 19. Thank you. 
Like music, voices for peace, human rights, and compassion make a great difference in our world. To honor people committed to these ideals, we bestow the annual Terezin Legacy Award. This year, we honor two recipients. We are thrilled to present our first to Dr. Rochelle Walensky, director of the CDC, for her noble work that spreads hope and humanity in dire times. We recently commissioned a work from exciting young composer Jeremiah Klarman. This choral work is dedicated to Dr. Walensky. This new piece joins our list of more than 40 TMF commissions honoring the Terezin legacy. These commissions are a vibrant memorial to all artists silenced by oppression, war, or genocide. Two are by Milad Yosufi, an artist you are about to hear. He is an Afghan composer whose artistic voice is especially courageous. Ulman also voices concern for young gifted talents at risk of being silenced. He wrote, the peculiar fate of our chamber music ensembles has the quality of a meteor. It briefly flashes promisingly and then disappears. In each new case, it is to be desired that it may be different this time. This brings to mind the artist suffering under Taliban rule. In solidarity, Milad has chosen to perform his solo piano work, Farewell Kabul.
we are thrilled to welcome cellist Yo-Yo Ma, an extraordinary humanitarian and cultural ambassador for music, and a wonderful friend and supporter of the Terrazine Music Foundation. This piece, this lullaby, was written by Gideon Klein when he was 26 years old. I wanted to play this piece for you, partly because this is a very special piece for Mark Ludwig. He actually played this for Gideon Klein's sister. And I can imagine the sentiments that flowed when the music became alive at that moment for both of them. I cannot tell you how important it is for me to participate at this gala, not only because I have played with a wonderful pianist, a survivor of Terezin, um, on the stage of Symphony Hall when he was in his 90s, and that remains an indelible memory. But even more so, I was born in 1955, 10 years after World War II ended. And I think I have spent my life trying to understand what happened. Because I think my whole life, I've been living with the shadows, with the repercussions of what happened during those years, both from my parents' side, but also the changes, the, the violent, dramatic changes that happened in the world since then and because of those years. So recently, I paid my third visit to the Prague Jewish Cemetery, and I was given permission to enter and to even play a little piece of music in remembrance of the people who were buried there. And part of the trip was to examine and to meet young people two decades after the Velvet Revolution and where their identities are today how they feel about the world, how they remember things, how they want to align themselves politically, economically, culturally, going east, going west, going north, and how they welcome people or new people, immigrants, into their country. 
So today we are together remembering. And perhaps this is one of the most important things that we can do. Because through remembering, we give ourselves the option to make slightly different decisions moving forward, depending on how those memories affect us. So thank you all for being here, and what a privilege to be amongst you all tonight. Thank you. It is a pleasure to present survivor and jazz pianist Simon Gronowski, co-recipient of our Terezin Legacy Award. We honor him with a beautiful sculpture designed by celebrated glass artist Alex Bernstein. The inspiration for the sculpture's design is a brick from the Terezin Fortress. It evokes the suffering and loss as well as the great creativity that occurred there. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, it's a great honor and a great pleasure for me to receive this award from your prestigious foundation. I dedicate it to my mother and my sister who died in Auschwitz in 1943 and to my father who died out of despair in 1945. And I was 11 years myself old when I was deported on April 1943. My mother pushed me out of a moving cattle car, cattle train, to save me and continue her journey to her death in Auschwitz-Birkenau. I loved my sister, a great classical pianist who played, I remember, Beethoven, Chopin, Mozart, and who also loved jazz. After the war, <clears throat> thinking to her, I taught myself to play jazz, jazz piano, and became a jazz pianist, a little jazz pianist. And jazz helped me integrate and preserve my balance, my equilibrium. Because music brings people together and inspires joy. Life without music is impossible. Music played an essential role in Terezin. At the beginning of the pandemic in Belgium and the subsequent lockdown in April 2020, 2020, my daughter Katya said to me, open the window and play the piano for your neighbors and passers by. I will, it will cheer them up and it will cheer you up too. And when I opened the window, the street was empty. And I played on the sunny side of the street. And by the time I was ready to play the second track, 
a group of people had gathered for my window and they were happy. I am often invited to tell my story in schools. In my country, Belgium, and as a wear, for example, I was invited in France, in Germany, in England, and even in the United States of America. I was invited in schools in Dallas, Texas, in New Mexico, and also in Los Angeles. And everywhere, the young people are marvelous. In Germany, too. Young people and even children have to know the barbar barbarism of the past to defend freedom and democracy today. Armed with my experience, I can bring a message of hope and happiness. I carry out the mission to honor the memory of my parents and my sister and all the, uh, the other victims of the Holocaust. Because despite this past and present horrors, because even today, people are suffering in this world, I keep my faith in the, in the future because, ladies and gentlemen, I believe in the essential goodness of man. The price that you are awarding me strengthens my faith. Long live peace and friendship among men. Ullmann opens a critique praising, and I quote, Rudolf Freudenfeld, whose achievements with Krasas Brunderbar will not be forgotten. 
He is a true teacher and a good musician. We are thankful to him for his loving work with the children of Theresienstadt. In 1939, Hans Krasa composed the children's opera Brundelbar for a Jewish orphanage in Prague. But the German occupation and enforcement of the Nuremberg racial laws prohibited public performances. The child performers were transported to Terezin, where the Nazis forced them to perform Brundelbar for an International Red Cross Committee visit and the production of a Nazi propaganda film. The opera tells the simple tale of a penniless brother and sister, Aninka and Pepecek, who must get milk for their sick mother. Watching the villagers giving coins to Brundelbar, the local organ grinder, they hatch the idea of singing to buy the milk. But the evil Brundelbar sees them as competition and snatches their hat full of coins. With the aid of a sparrow, cat, dog, and the village children, Annika and Pepecek triumph over the evil Brundelbar, joyously singing, we've won a victory over the tyrant mean. Sound the trumpets, beat your drums, and show us your esteem. For the Terezin prisoners, the opera's villain was a stand-in for Hitler, and the song expressed their hope to be free. Here is a clip from the Nazi propaganda film.
I want to thank our artists and all the people behind the scenes for making this program possible. And we want to thank you for joining us. This year marks 30 years of TMF programs. These include concerts, commissions, recordings, publications, and Holocaust and genocide education programs around the world. We are committed to honoring the Terezine legacy, and we hope you will consider helping us make our programs possible. In addition to supporting this meaningful work, please consider bringing a TMF program to your community or school. We invite you to explore the Terezine artistic legacy through our book, Our Will to Live. All proceeds will support future TMF education programs. In the spirit of gratitude and hope, we close with two of Victor Ullmann's Terezine choral arrangements. As he wrote, the best praise of the critic is probably that he heard his own arrangements of Hebrew melodies performed impeccably. No, no.